Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about DDR5 and running higher speed beyond JDEC or beyond even like the memory profiles typically associated with DDR5. So we're going to be looking at running 6400 mega transfers on uh, a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. As you can see here, the memory kit that I'm using is a G-Skill Rip Jaws S5. So this is SK Hynix. And you can see it has an XMP profile of 5600. Uh, these are the primary timings here at 1.25 volts. So that one on the right side there. Uh, we are running 64 gigabytes. You can see. So it's two sticks of 32 gigs each. Uh, I would recommend if you want to run 64 gigabytes use this sort of configuration. Do two sticks of 32 as opposed to four sticks of 16. Uh, it is easier on the memory controller. This is this is true not just for the Ryzen CPUs, just for all uh, modern CPUs in general. So if we look at the Uncore, the Uncore frequency, also known as the U-Clock, or the clock of the IMC, the integrated memory controller, this is typically half of the advertised memory speed. So if, for example, if you have 56 100 megahertz advertised RAM out of the box, uh, it means that the effective memory clock or the M clock and the U clock will be half of this, so 2800 as you can see here. So DRAM frequency, this is the M clock, we're running at 2800 megahertz, and then the uncore frequency, this is the U clock, we're also running at 2800 megahertz. So when they're equal to each other, it means that we're running in a one to one ratio also known as gear one mode. If you we want to run beyond 6,000 megahertz, uh, we are going to have to run in a two to one ratio. So we're going to have to make the uncore frequency run at half of the speed of the memory frequency. So that would be, in this case, if we're at 2,800, that would be 1,400 on the uncore if we wanted to do a gear two mode or a two to one ratio for uh, 5600 but you only really need to use this 2 to 1 ratio if you are doing memory speeds above 6000 most Zen 4 CPUs are good up to 6000 megahertz to run their uncore frequency at a 1 to 1 ratio which means they can achieve 3000 megahertz on the u-clock so now we're going to get into the BIOS and we're going to show how that process actually works okay the reason why I'm filming this this way using a camera as opposed to using my capture card is because I do want to do this in real time so you guys can get an idea of how the memory training process works, how long it takes, so you guys have kind of a a good example of what to expect when you're trying to overclock memory. So this memory is only rated for 5600 megahertz so going to 6400 megahertz is considered an overclock and it isn't even guaranteed by the actual memory dims that I'm using. So we're gonna see if I can actually get that to work. What I'll probably do here is disable XMP. We're gonna disable XMP, we're going to set this to 64, leave this in gear two mode, and then we're going to set this voltage to 1.4, and see if that works. Yeah, we're gonna set this to 1.4. Yeah, we don't need to do that. And then I also want to keep, yeah, we might, we might just keep JDEC timings, see if I can get it to do this. And the other thing I want to do is I want to go to AMD overclocking. SOC voltage is still 1.2. Okay. So, whoops. So now let's uh, save this. We're going to try... Yes, we're going to try 6400, but without XMP timings. So we're going to loosen the timings by trying to run JDEC timings at 6400 megahertz on the RAM, and then we're also going to be using Gear 2 mode, so the IMC is not going to be uh, stressed out too much. Alright, just to show everybody what's going on, so if you have a motherboard that has the postcode debug, that is very beneficial when doing these sort of things, because if you have that, you get more than just this little debug LED here. So this is the DRAM LED. The DRAM LED may, mainly indicates that it is training right now, but if you have the seven-segment display, uh, that's really handy because that will basically give you code 15 
which basically tells you that you're doing memory training. So here, it looks like it post. That's, that's actually a good sign. So let's see what it actually did. Okay, so now it's actually going into Windows. It's going into Windows. I wasn't able to hit the delete key fast enough to get into the BIOS as I was adjusting the camera. So let's let's get into Windows and see what it actually what it actually managed to boot up on. Okay. So Task Manager says that we are running at 6400 megahertz, two out of four DIMMs, 64 gigs of memory. Okay, so this is interesting. It ended up programming, so the Gigabyte BIOS ended up programming some really loose timings, as you can see here. So it set it for cast latency of 54, 54, 54, and then 103 on the TRAS, TRC-156. So these are really, these are really loose. These are, m like, more loose than the 40, 40, 40. If you look at my uh, SPD here, so it's got... JDAC 404077. But in order for it to get 6400, it is doing 5454 So, like I said earlier, this could be two things. It could be my RAM just isn't. And, and now, guys, remember, this is 1.4 volts. So, would I use this? No, because the voltage is too high for this lo like loose timings. Uh, on the RAM. So I'm not going to be running 1.4 volts all the time DDR5 uh, long term. That's not going to be good, especially with such loose timings like this. Uh, and the other thing too is the uncore frequency. The U-Clock is now in gear 2 mode, which is not, it. it's not terrible when you're running in gear 2 mode, but it, it's not as ideal as gear 1 mode. Let's just put it that way. So you can see now the uncore is basically 1600 megahertz and the DRAM frequency is 3200 megahertz. So that means that this is indeed 6400 megahertz on the RAM because DRAM is double data rate. Double data rate means double 32 equals 64. So, and then our encore is now like half of the RAM, the mem clock. So, you know, not really ideal. I don't expect this to perform better than what I was running before. Basically, the conclusion is, if you really want to do 6400, I highly recommend that you purchase a RAM kit that is actually rated for 6400 at specific uh, cast latency timings that are, you know, probably something along the lines of like 36 or 38 or 32 or some, somewhere around there. Uh, and make sure you get SK Hynix memory as well, because SK Hynix memory is the most tolerant at higher speeds while also needing the least amount of voltage so they're less leaky compared to say samsung uh, samsung if you try to run samsung above 6000 it gets really hot really fast so unless you want to do like active cooling on your ram which some people can do and that's totally fine uh, you might end up getting better mileage out of like samsung dims if you do that otherwise i kind of recommend that you just go for sk hynix and buy a kit that's actually rated for 6400. In my case, I don't think this RAM, this RAM might just not be the best bin, just looking at this, because typically, if you wanna do 6400 on Ryzen, you just need to buy a kit that supports 64. Ideally, make sure it's an Expo kit, if possible, because that means that it's QVL, most likely, for a lot of these boards. And then you're also gonna be using your, you know, half, U clock equals half mem clock, and then that's pretty much the easiest way to do it. So anyway guys, hope you found this video useful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.